Good morning. I'm Tom Diggs. I'm the chair of the Lake Monticello Community Developments Committee. Uh, we have a, a delight this morning. Uh, uh, Douglas Miles is the Community Development Director for, for Fluvanna County. He is leading the county's efforts to revise the comprehensive plan. <clears throat> I guess 905 is a great time for phone calls. Uh, normally it's mine, but fortunately I remembered to silence mine. Uh, Mr. Miles presented what he's about to show to us last night at the planning commission meeting. And he is open to taking questions after he makes his presentation. So, Mr. Miles, would you please come up? Um, so, last night, as uh, Tom indicated, that's why we have dates of last night, July 12th. Um, this morning, we're presenting this information to you. Um, this is my normal presentation to the Planning Commission, and why I want to do this one first is kind of sets the tone for what we've um, been able to accomplish in the last year with working with VDOT. If you can go to the next slide. Um, well, first, I'm sorry, the, um, our updates on Colonial Circle. So the activity that you see at 53 in the roundabout, um, we have, uh, in May, we approved the site plan for the 124 um, workforce apartments that would be coming in. If you're looking at the roundabout directly in where the entrance is, they would be on, on the right in the back. The front would be uh, office commercial. The center would be a... Uh, convenience market, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then the rear and very rear is uh, townhouses and single-family homes. So um, that is uh, as of July 1st, Friday, July 1st, the folks um, with uh, Stanley Martin recorded their um, 204 single-family and townhouse units. Um, if you're not familiar with Stanley Martin, they are the same developer, builder, main builder in Spring Creek located um, up in um, uh, Louisa at Zion Crossroads. So their houses and styles um, of um, model home and that kind of thing will most likely be similar to that. Uh, and then their townhouse units, there are numerous ones they have throughout um, Albemarle in Central Virginia. So um, they are an East Coast builder, so um, they, they are... Um, quite well known here in the Mid-Atlantic and do quality uh, home development. So um, the subdivision roads have been bonded for site construction. Um, aqua water and sewer lines have been bonded. And as um, everyone knows with the apartments, the fire suppression um, was set up uh, for that for our building official, Andy Wills. And so we, he is now finalizing his construction plans um, for the apartments at this time this summer hoping to see that probably be completed by the end of the summer. Um, just recently, um, we received the preliminary layout for the 7,000 square foot neighborhood convenience mart uh, with gas and diesel pump islands. And we're also going to try to work with them, um, discussion of uh, some EV charging stations and um, in that vicinity. Um, like you see at um, Zion Crossroads at the Sheets facility, um, they actually are a benefit to a convenience market because the people charging their car actually go in and patronize the business, eat, um, you know, purchase items, and then return to their car after charging for 30 minutes or, or less. Um, there is a um, not currently a car wash uh, that is uh, slated and shown on there, but it is zoned for that. So we're, we're working with them on the 7,000 square foot market. So next slide, Tom. This is our exciting news for the community. Um, so something that um, really I think we've been working on since I, I arrived in um, uh, June of 2019. So if everyone's familiar, and I'll show a slide um, of where this is located, but if the, you're familiar with what's called Main Street, Palmyra, downtown Palmyra, um, 
the Commonwealth Transportation Board a few weeks ago approved our um, 1,271,000 um, called Transportation Alternative TAP Grant Fund um, for dollars to be administered um, for streetscape construction. And the paragraph below is directly from uh, VDOT's language. The project will both improve pedestrian accessibility and safety with the construction of five foot sidewalks, crosswalks and curb ramps to provide pedestrian connectivity. And this is along Stone Jail Street and I'll show a slide in a minute of where that is, but the reason we chose that as phase one is because it's mainly county property or property that's um, owned and managed by the historical society. So we're not disrupting any businesses, any homeowners, um, we're kind of starting off the project, uh, doing work on, we, we kind of consider on our portion of the Main Street area. Um, and then that um, also will connect the existing courthouse uh, the, and the historic courthouse. So that project award was um, very exciting for us to start that um, potential uh, streetscape project. Uh, the other key thing is um, we only have a 20% match. And on top of that, the 20% match only has to be paid um, in about $100,000 um, installments every three years, one a year. So we're not paying the whole 20% up front. We didn't know that going in. Um, that was a nice surprise to us as well. We thought we, you know, Eric, Mr. Dahl was going to budget that 20%. So we got a little bonus there with, um, with the VDOT Culpepper office. So um, next slide. And these are some of the streetscape improvements that have already been done. So. Um, this is looking straight, straight into the 2001 courthouse. Um, this is uh, the hardscape kind of benches and directories that are done. These are done previously with um, great volunteer work by Park, Historical Society, and other members. So they've been working hard for eight to ten years doing a lot of things that they can do with the money that they raise in the community. So the key thing about the streetscape funding is it's money that VDOT has to infuse. It's just, you saw it's almost $1.3 million. It's not where, you know, the community gathers that money. It's so, um, and this is really um, an opportunity for us to look at um, for that area. And the next slide, I think, is yes. So this area is, if to kind of orientate you, the center of the slide there um, to the right, there's that green area. The center of the slide is the historic courthouse um, right there. Yes. So, so basically, um, the old stone, move this up a little bit. Sorry, at church, uh, keep it a little lower. This one's not as sensitive, I guess. Um, so basically what you see there is um, the um, Stone Jail Street area um, is where we're proposing uh, to do the work. And the road that currently crisscrosses in the green area um, across there, it actually divides the, um, it divides the historic, this is the closer I get to it. I think it's sorry about that. It's less sensitive. Um, that actually currently divides what we call the um, uh, historic uh, courthouse green area, and so we're returning that. So if any of you could come to the uh, Palmyra Arts Festival events there, that will be additional area for them to use for those events. Um, it also cuts down on safety issues, um, people crisscrossing through um, the traffic patterns here. VDOT, when we walked uh, with them last fall with Mr. Dahl and our, our team with VDOT, um, they saw all kinds of areas that definitely could use, deserve funding. And this, we hope, is phase one, as we've called it. Um, and that will get everything completed on the county side. And then our second phase of the three phases would be the heaviest lift of a Main Street. So right now, Main Street has two-way traffic with parking on either side of the road. And then you have uh, public works trucks and other vehicles going through that area because that's where they're located. So um, that is something that we would like to change and we're gonna work with um, in phase two so that it would become one way and the, the parking area um, would be located on one side of the road and Mr. Dahl was instrumental in working with VDOT to get that, uh, the angled parking on the right towards the green area. Um, for that would be basically merchant parking um, so that the folks that are uh, totes my goats and um, scrappy elephant, some of those folks there, they would have dedicated parking. Um, some of them park behind their facilities, but they, they need 
times uh, to load vehicle, their vehicle with supplies to go to, art, to arts festivals and other. So our, our goal is really to work um, hand in hand with the business owners um, and uh, get all those um, kind of things set up for phase two. And then every other year we get to apply for this funding. Um, and so that's really where we're at now. Um, and then Mr. Dahl will bring this to the board this fall and start administering the survey work, the engineering work. And the best part of it all is, as I mentioned earlier, our public works department does not have to administer this. VDOT will administer this project out of the Culpeper office. So um, again, that helps us. Um, we're learning in the process um, doing this, <clears throat> excuse me, so that uh, we can be successful on phase two and then phase three is off the map and our phase three development would go down the hill, if you can imagine, from behind the courthouse um, and all the way down to um, Route 15 where the bridge is. Um, so that would be um, just off the map and you can see that there's also a little bit of change in um, one-way directions only now. So Stone Jail Street would be one way in. And then the circulation pattern would basically be a clockwise manner where you would go around and then come down past the treasurer's office and Palmyra Church um, in a one-way direction because there's a lot of traffic conflicts, especially at tax season when people are making payments. Um, and so our goal is to increase parking in this area as well throughout the three phases. So I think that's it. Um, the calendar reminders next are, were for the Planning Commission last night, but I can also let you know we're here today. Um, we do have um, two Rural Historic Preservation Advisory sessions coming up as part of the comp plan. Yeah, Mrs. Radford, I'm sorry. No, the apartment building is separate. That's on the right-hand side. So if you come in, the main entrance they're currently constructing, which is Old, old Field Drive, um, Old Field Drive comes in and it'll be on the right hand side past the front retail office area that Mr. Peters would develop. So that's the, um, as you mentioned, that's uh, 124 units. Uh, the 100 and, uh, 204, the single family will be all the way in the back. And then in the center behind the other larger commercial tract is the townhouse grouping. So that, that's, that's kind of how in planning we do that. We do commercial office. Right, it's, it's a total of zone 325, and so um, the 204 and the 124 kind of comes right up um, um, to that total amount for 325. Um, so we've now set two meetings um, that uh, we conferred, uh, confirmed with the Planning Commission last night. Um, so upcoming, these are in the Morris Room, and they're uh, kind of late afternoon sessions. Anyone's welcome to join us. Um, the Thursday, July 28th, 4 to 5.30 session um, in the Morris Room, that's in the main. You come to Mr. Dahl's office, uh, County Administrator's office, you would walk straight in that door, walk into the Morris Room. Um, then we have our set uh, planning, regular Planning Commission meeting coming up. Um, that's at the forming, returning to the Carriesburg Performing Arts Center now that the summer uh, workshop play performances are done there, we'll return there. And then the um, Thursday, August 11th meeting is another Rural and Historic Preservation Advisory Session. Again, open to the public, 4 to 5.30. Um, we will also have in the lobby, for those that missed some of the spring open house things, some of our display boards as well um, to show with the community. So if we can go on to the... Tom, thank you. Am I doing all right on time? Sure. Okay. And again, this was provided to um, the Planning Commission last night at their um, regular meeting. I will give a disclaimer since I'm being recorded in here in the community, um, which my wife and I are also residents of um, LMOA. But um, please remember a lot of the, the um, information I'm providing to you has not reached the board level yet because we're doing a board retreat with them at the end of August. Um, however, Mrs. Eager sits on the Planning Commission and had a few questions last night and generally felt this information was suitable um, for discussion with everyone. So I um, just wanted to kind of state that. Um, so um, I also want to let you know we have um, Jennifer Schmack uh, came, uh, our Economic Development Director in the back of the room. She's my team, team member on, on that. Um, so some of this uh, work that um, I'm going to talk about, especially in the Zion Crossroads part, the third 
third brief presentation. Um, we've been working on um, that this more this summer. So, so this you see is our current adopted comprehensive plan, future land use map. And if any of this becomes repetitive from what you heard at the open houses, let me know. Um, but we can go on to the next slide. So just a recap what we did. We went through um, March 10th. Uh, we had the rural preservation emphasis. Um, the rural preservation group began meeting um, as an advisory group um, concurrently with those open houses. Our second event, we focused more on the opposite. We focused on what's called the CPAs, the community planning areas, and those on the maps are the, that kind of fuchsia purple color. Um, and the, really the F emphasis is to get people into those community planning areas and to reside, work, live, play, what have you in those areas um, and actually reside and not drive out of some of those areas um, if, ne if needed, if not needed, um, so that you can do most of the things in your own community. Um, Zion Crossroads Gateway Plan, um, that beat out open house function uh, occurred up at uh, the Spring Creek Clubhouse. Mr. Smith, who's here um, on your, your committee here, he attended as well as some of our other um, Zion Crossroads members um, as part of that gateway plan. So next slide. The gateways, um, the one on the right is our main one, the um, 25015. That's the heart of the Zion Crossroads area for us. Um, and so we're focusing on, on that. We're working, partnering with Louisa right now. They're doing a um, smart scale round five uh, submittal for a roundabout there. If you're familiar with that area um, where the uh, Crescent Inn uh, restaurant and the old Texaco station, in the late 60s, early 70s, when all that uh, commercial was constructed there, there actually was a roundabout. Um, so many years ago, and uh, Andy Sorrell, one of the senior planners here previously, provided us with a lot of really cool old aerial maps of that time. Um, so then now there's a traffic light. So then now VDOT's going to look at possibly having another roundabout there. So we have this generational cycle of um, not a lot of people realize, and we think of um, roundabouts in Europe and stuff, but we actually had them here in Virginia. So it's not a completely new concept. Um, just some, some roundabouts were functioning in areas where traffic lights didn't work at that time. So but I'll kind of leave it at that. So we, we, we in planning, we, we do like um, roundabouts for funding because we get them faster from VDOT. Traffic lights take a long time. So uh, the other side of the map is I think, um, I'm not going to dive into this too much, but um, we did a, a work working with VDOT Culpeper office on what's called VDOT functional classifications. Um, where we actually matched up with Albemarle County um, our gateways into the county, which is the one that's shown at the 250 line with Albemarle and Keswick and the Beaver Dam community. Um, functional classifications uh, work basically by increasing our, in, our interest and desire to work with other localities on funding, on regional funding. So when we combine with Albemarle and ourselves or Louisa and ourselves, we actually score higher because we're partnering and participating. So functional classifications on 250, and then we also did 15, and then we are working on um, future uh, Scottsville Route 6 functional classifications as well. So next slide. Kind of uh, transitioning into the last two open houses, um, we had a, a real good um, transportation plan, thoroughfare plan kind of discussion with everyone. Um, like we just kind of went over here. And then our last meeting, um, we were very pleased to have the, um, Christine Jacobs, the TJPDC Executive Director, bring her team um, and the housing um, and GIS staff members from TJPDC came and provided updates and information for folks on those regional plans that we're considering to place into um, one shape or form or another into the county comp plan. So next slide. So that arrives at what we're proposing coming into the fall for the future land use map uh, to be focused upon um, with our um, advisory groups finishing up their work, um, presenting this information to the planning commission and to the public. And then uh, throughout the late fall and the holidays, um, staff will be preparing the final comprehensive plan over the holidays and then coming into the 2023 timeframe with the planning commission and board um, we would present final findings 
um, on that. So we're hoping for a first to mid-quarter 2023 adoption of the comprehensive plan. Um, you just have to remember that we had about a year and a half, two year delay with COVID, but um, we were working well into all of those time frames. We actually did lots of field work because it was nice to get out of the office. Um, and that opportunity presented itself quite well. Um, and I we took our team and TJPDC folks and Louisa and did a lot of our field work at that time. So, um, and thanks to Mr. Dahl for allowing us to do that. So. Um, I think that's the last one there. Yeah, with side-by-side -side comparison, I have that display back there. Um, some paper copies for you all. Um, that kind of gives us an understanding that the rural residential area where rural clustering was to occur is not occurring. So we want to kind of change that dynamic and, and let the rural preservation area dominate the area to have folks realize that's our intent. Is green is to stay green and Fuchsia has become developed, so that's our main focus. So, so real quick, what did we learn in this process of the open house series and, and working with the community, working with LMOA, working with our other partners, TJPDC? Definitely the ret retain the rural character. Um, we even had some real good comments last night during public comments. Um, we're going to try to look at design work um, with major corridor tree buffer areas or site landscaping. Um, the key thing to remember though, is you have to strike a balance with commercial visibility and rural character. Um, a lot of times, yes, um, we can screen different types of uses from one another, but um, in the end, those people that market the property do need to have um, visibility. So we'll, we'll look for that uh, balance to occur. Um, then we'll kind of transition now into developing the Zion Crossroads area. And as I let Tom and the um, uh, Community Development Committee know, remember I'm focusing on land use, transportation, and housing. Anything that works on water and sewer infrastructure, that's Mr. Dahl. So, um, and I, I, I know all that knowledge of information, but I just want to let you know we're very close here at the end of the summer for finishing our Zion Crossroads water and sewer um, implementation, and that is actually going on as we speak. He's currently in a meeting this morning with JRWA completing that work over at the library. So I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, but uh, Jennifer and I are trying to work really hard to um, get office industrial space and future retail space um, set up, zoned, um, established for that. So and next slide. So a little bit of deeper dives, and I'm not going to go into too much of this, but um, some of the things that we uh, found um, in the um, comments, and uh, Aaron Spitzer, the director, is, what is, is definitely aware and working with us. Um, his uh, current master plan is uh, from 2011, um, and he's not mandated to do something um, like, uh, you know, changes every five years and stuff like we are, but usually what they, um, you do is you do a... Um, 10 or 15 year update along with the CIP, um, capital improvements plan. So a lot of that stuff will kind of come out afterwards. So a um, master plan for parks and rec, and then usually a thoroughfare plan um, comes out after the comprehensive plan and work is done because that analysis. So, <clears throat> so one of the things that's already uh, was asked about, the board has already budgeted for. So add more family friendly recreational spaces. So a splash park uh, rather than a pool uh, has been uh, budgeted, and I think um, going forward with Mr. Spitzer's office to do that. Uh, we also had um, uh, some residents and folks indicating that uh, they love the playground equipment, but it's not toddler size. I think over at Bunker Park, is it called? Um, we have toddler size ones here at the lake, so they're, we're kind of going to balance that and see if um, we can get um, not just school age kids um, and see how that works long term. Um, there was indications of uh, developing and expanding rural recreational uses down in Columbia and the areas near along the James River. Um, many of you know that uh, we received Dominion funding. Um, part of that was a half million dollar proffer um, to construct, spark, construct park space in the southern area of the county. Um, a lot of comments in the southern area are that Pleasant Grove is wonderful, but we don't like driving 20 minutes or longer to go do recreation, so could you 
long term in the next five to 10 years, give us some space. And so we will do that. Um, and that also increases the amenities in that area for, for um, residents. So a um, lot of comments on um, river, river uh, access points to canoe and kayak launches. Uh, Mr. Spitzer does a great job out here partnering with you guys on the lake to teach people how to canoe and kayak. And then once they kind of get to level two, they want to go out on the river, they would like to see if we can start creating some kayak and canoe launch type things. And I think uh, other communities partner with like the Rotary Club and things like that and build those. So, um, and then finally, there's been interest in uh, constructing an outdoor theater. This kind of came out of the whole um, COVID discussion. Um, and so that's uh, ongoing with the Parks and Rec Department as well. Um, kind of beyond the regular fairs and fest festivals and carnivals we hold. Um, so and that's pretty much that. And then we can do a little bit of transportation planning. And then um, so we have spent a good bulk or portion of our time with this comprehensive plan on creating the framework of road networks. Um, I think Mrs. Curry provided me some really good comments at one point. Um, this is your comment, ma'am. Um, transportation networks are very important with the protection of the major routes, Route 250, 15, 6. And I think there's been a lot of focus on Route 53. Well, we spent all of last year, all last winter of 2021 into the spring um, with folks on the Route 53 corridor. Um, at the time, it was Major Wells, who's now you're now uh, police chief, uh, director of public safety. So we are still partnering with him. Um, he's in the back of the room. Uh, along with uh, uh, Sheriff Hess, um, other, other VDOT uh, representatives, we focused a lot on um, uh, the areas of um, Route 53 and Roarton Lake Road. That is an area of um, uh, traffic that we have not been able to find funding source to to correct that area, and we're still working with TJPDC and VDOT Culpepper. Um, there's been other comments about connections, uh, circular routes. We found out on January, January 4th, when all the trees came down, where all the hot spots were. We already knew which ones they were, um, so, but it also helps us um, uh, with our uh, volunteer fire and sheriff's department and everything, took a lot of these pictures of where some of the trees came down in areas that as so you basically know, you circulate around the lake and there's no other way to go unless you go into Albemarle and go on to Martin's King Road and come back around. So um, we're trying to work on getting um, those things kind of established. And then, of course, VDOT's maintenance people found out all winter and into the spring of the tree removal. So um, there was some positive things that came out of that, but um, it, it was uh, quite a, a damaging storm. But last... Um, uh, Union Mills Road, um, we've heard from people that live and work in that, use that for commuting to Charlottesville, to Albemarle Pantops. So we're going to look at um, some potential safety improvements. That actually is a designated primary road and not a secondary road, so that also helps us with VDOT funding. So that's one of um, the roads that we're going to focus on in the thoroughfare plan. And then finally, uh, you know, not, not something that uh, um, we've done a lot of study and work on, but we are scoping this basically for future um, rural crossroads areas. Um, the top one um, uh, is the Troy Road post office area. We currently have had for the last three years a funding um, request through VDOT Smart Scale for if you're coming from Zion Crossroads and you crest the hill and you come up to uh, Troy Market and the post office, uh, the funding request is to basically grade that road down so that you do a straight shot through and you have a intersection that's visible and what they call sight distance. Um, uh, and so then on top of that, there would be additional um, turn lane um, movements. The problem is um, we don't have all the peak traffic uh, periods there because everyone's just passing through that area and not kind of like, um, congregating in that area uh, in VDOT's mind. So um, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of crashes there, but we do have potential um, issues there. So um, we are going to do one this final round um, of funding there. Um, we've been also reaching out to the federal post office 
um, to see if they can give us federal support um, because their employees and their customers are going in and out of there. So, um, but anyways, so the second part of um, where we're doing some of these things are uh, the Wildwood area. That's kind of just a, um, that's our Campbell's Tires located. Um, kind of has a lot of road network um, activity there, old road beds. Um, we're just scoping that area and then um, Mrs. Booker and some of the folks in the Fork Union area asked us to look and scope um, on the Dixie area, which is right there where 6, Route 6 goes to Columbia, 15, and all that kind of area um, for, not for a future roundabout, but um, for just additional um, uh, traffic, um, signal, uh, traffic work that could be done there um, as well. So then last, I think on this set, yeah, um, we didn't get a whole lot of interest. Um, Kids store and Kent store, so um, they they seem to feel that, um, which is great, um, that where they have their um, available uh, commercial and meeting space, um, that uh, what we did, we are going to put this in the comp plan to um, have considerations um, for that because it is a 20-year plan. So and I think that's it on these slides. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go all, this is, I kind of went over this in the community development director's report. And this is kind of the last landing slide. This is who we consider all of our, all of our partners, okay. Um, they're all the counties that surround us. Um, most people don't think of us working with Buckingham and Cumberland um, and, and, uh, and different things, but we actually do. Um, uh, working on uh, different regional projects with them as well. They're not in the TJPDC. Um, they are actually right where we're located, all kinds of different PDCs come together. Richmond RVA PDC, the Thomas Jefferson, and the Southern, uh, Southern Southside uh, PDC. So, and that's that on that. And last, um, and uh, Jennifer, I actually may call you up here ever, a little bit um, if, uh, if needed, but... Um, so the last and uh, really f strong focus that we want to work on, um, as I've kind of presented, and we have um, done a lot of transportation planning in this area, and it's great, but as a, as a true certified planner, I want to get into our land use and analysis and everything um, relative to where we're going with the Zion Crossroads Gateway Plan. And at the end, I'll kind of focus on one of the partners I just showed you all, ULI Virginia. So we'll kind of run through this a little quicker. Um, that's the focus area that you see at the top of the map. Um, the heart of the um, Zion Crossroads area right there at 250 and 15, um, that basically that southwest quadrant is where we're focusing a lot of our attention on and then down, a little bit down Route 15. So um, that's the general area and you can see that we are uh, GIS planner uh, created this map to show you the proximity of how close everything is, Lake Monticello, Palmyra, and Zion Crossroads. Um, there, people think of these mile, these, it's so it's, it's very actually, the, the north central part of the county is, is where a lot of our focus is, um, and Zion Crossroads uh, being number one right now. Um, so these are some of your members that are serving on the advisory group, Josh Bauer and Steve Smith here. Um, participated in the VA open house sessions in Louisa. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Josh, Steve here as well, and Andy Sorrell prepared a lot of, um, especially Andy Sorrell prepared a lot of instrumental comments for us as a, the previous senior planner here. And he's lived here uh, most of his adult life. Um, so um, we're really thankful for that work and we're also looking forward to Hopefully once uh, Sandy's back uh, and uh, Christine at TJPDC in like August to early September, we'll have a meeting So um, with them. So tried to do one in July, just didn't work with everyone's planning. So make it simple, simple for um, planning graphics. Um, so right now, this is the whole process. We are right now in the bend, on rounding the bend on car number three. Um, with our alternative solutions, uh, Kittleson and Associates and VDOT Culpepper, uh, planning uh, manager uh, Chuck Proctor, they are working on all of this right now um, with the comments that were generated in the April meeting. And so right now what we're tasked to do at Louisa and Flavana County, um, both myself and Josh Gillespie, the community development director in Louisa, we're trying to 
look at functions of land use and how transportation planning, all that works together, and then obviously the um, infrastructure for water and sewer and broadband because the fourth utility of Firefly um, is well in, was installed in that area um, right away. So, and then we have other providers as well. So next slide. Um, I just selected three slides out of the numerous slides that I think really focus on Flavana County. Um, you can see this, this area here. Um, the two bookend areas is the roundabout at 250 and 15, and the one that we had funded on the far end at Troy Road and 250. Um, then you have these uh, yellow rectangular areas of VDOT signage letting you know you're entering the Zion Crossroads area as gateway notifications and as uh, transportation for folks who are maybe their first time coming through this area that they're entering a roundabout. As you travel throughout Virginia, you know, different parts, um, roundabouts can be challenging or can be quite simple if you're used to them. So, so the, the uh, request for um, Louisa right now, it's VDOT Browns uh, Smart Scale 5. They're working on this. The property to the um, uh, area just from that is the glass property that um, Jennifer has been working on with a lot of um, interest. I uh, won't name those things. Um, but we have done a lot of work right in basically in between this major intersection and the water storage tank. Um, so safety treatment short term. Uh, the current uh, traffic light, they may look at doing a red light running camera treatment short term. They, that's also a way of gathering data or an analysis of what's happening um, uh, with the local um, uh, sheriff's department and uh, Virginia State Police. So um, not trying to catch bad people, but trying to keep it safe um, is really the motto there. Um, our funded tra uh, last year around uh, uh, round four uh, well, two years ago, I apologize, our FY 2025 new roundabout, this is at um, Troy 250 and Zion Station. So this, this uh, we were successful. We were also very, um, this was work that was done prior to my arrival, but we kind of helped get it across the finish line. We were um, successful, the only, the second rural county in um, the VDOT Culpeper area that got funding. Uh, the other one was Orange County up in um, uh, just north of us on 15. So we were quite happy with this um, uh, award of uh, $9.5 million roundabout there. So, And the last one we're working on is um, Starlight Park and US 15 intersection. Um, unfortunately, this road is not a state maintained road. Um, it's been in existence as kind of an industrial access road and we're working on um, Jennifer and I have started the process to um, assist the property owners around there in scoping out some of that work um, to get that road established so that VDOT and uh, the folks that have done these different signal warrants and everything, and turn lane warrants. Um, and the next slide just kind of kind of lets people know that's what we're doing. We're currently working on that, be, trying to be instrumental in helping them get that road into the system long term for that area. And then the final thing is the gateway plan policy goals. And um, it's kind of let you know all the different uh, aspects that we're doing in the planning process. And these slides, as my staff said, um, the next ones, I'm not gonna read them all because they're very dense. Um, actually, my wife said, you need to break these up even more. So I did. Um, but what I'm trying to point out, kind of hit a topic on each one of these, um, we, this is kind of the heart of the planning action we're doing right now. We're really trying to work uh, with regional um, jaunt uh, park and ride facilities. Um, gas is going down, but it's still, it's still pretty high. And it's, you know, so we're trying to get addi additional areas for folks who are wanting to use um, for employment based or for medical uh, doctor visit based uh, jaunt and other um, shuttle services that uh, uh, function in the area to have a common area for not only the park and ride that's located in Louisa, but long term we want to have one in Flavana County um, because we would like to keep people on this side of I-64 to shop and commute and go into Charlottesville and Richmond or stay in that area. So in the last part, we've been working with um, uh, Louisa. They currently unfortunately don't have an urban development area designation and that, I think that's going to change in the next year or so. It helps us uh, with our VDOT smart scale scoring to but give them a kudos on the other side. 
they have all the economic development in that area um, pretty much. So we're kind of partnering in that aspect. So once we have a unified um, UDA area, we'll have a whole lot more scoring going on. So um, the next slide. Um, the inter integrated transportation network. Um, key takeaway is that last bullet there, reduce conflicts between commercial trucks and single occupancy vehicles. So you have a Honda Civic going up against uh, a large dump truck. Um, that's something that we've found in the research ourselves and working with VDOT um, Culpeper office. So um, the areas up there where Vanderlyn's located and a lot of uh, the county waste uh, vehicles and stuff, there's a lot of conflict points. Those business operators do a wonderful job, but as we get more people going through that area, um, we're working on what's called access management to have less conflict points in the 45 mile an hour zone um, so that we can um, get people in and out safely. Um, and then knowing that there's gonna be a lot of construction in that area for new growth, so we have to calculate that in as well. So next slide. I'm trying to. Yep, so this is kind of um, what I've been talking about all along. We have so many different opportunities for funding. As you saw the, uh, so all along here, the uh, transportation alternatives funding. And um, we also understand um, you know, different revenue sharing projects that we might be able to do with Louisa. Um, and then uh, as we function and work um, to get um, sidewalks, uh, we're looking at sidewalks to be internally orientated into projects rather than along 250. We don't feel we actually differ with Kittleson and Associates and VDOT Culpepper um, with having sidewalks along 250 in a 45 and 55 mile an hour zone until we get down to the next five or 10 years and new development in that area and the speed limit may drop from 55 to 45 and 45 to 35 as things get developed, we'll look at that. So um, we do think long term there would be needs for what we're trying to focus the developers uh, having internal oriented shopping uh, sidewalks um, at this time. And this is kind of um, wrapping up uh, basically what we've been talking about. Um, and uh, there's been interest or thought of on our part as the county and somewhat with TJPDC of eventually having something like a PVCC branch campus or um, you know other um, type things with industrial um, development and uh, I, my partner Jennifer on doing this can talk uh, an hour on workforce development and all that kind of stuff but that's basically in the planning process um, we try to um, see if we can get educational facilities there so their their employees are right there um, when I was younger I went to VCU um, graduate school classes right at the Chesterfield Fire Station, right outside my office. It was wonderful. Um, so um, doing it that way, um, rather than having your employees have to just drive downtown Charlottesville or drive downtown Richmond or to UR or wherever and do that. So hopefully we can see some of that type of things come up. We just have to put it in the plan and discuss it and see where it goes. So, And this is the last thing. And um, again, this is kind of my disclaimer again. Um, we are not looking at purchasing land, as Mrs. Eager said last night. Uh, no, we're not doing that. Um, again, it's a partnership. We would like to, if, if PVCC comes, maybe we could have a library branch in, as a part of or, or, or a combined library for PVCC and then the residents and um, employees of Zion Crossroads um, so that we would have a, a card system or you know, electronic checkout system available for our residents to use that. Um, we also, as you probably see behind McDonald's up there, there's sometimes um, industrial property owners will lease athletic fields short, or short term uh, to like Louisa County or Philvana County um, while they're waiting for water and sewer and other development to occur. Um, that frees up, uh, you know, parks and rec uh, opportunities for people to, to utilize space short term if that's what that landowner would like to do. Um, and then the challenge all along in Zion Crossroads is meeting space. We have very limited meeting space. So as corporate or industrial park developers um, create areas like where we're here in LMOA and meeting in this nice, wonderful room, there's a lot of times corporate partners that allow us to use their, um, their meeting space um, or audit auditorium space um, as a shared community asset. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, there is a VDOT uh, 
uh, Zion State, Zion Crossroads uh, maintenance shop right there next to Burger King. There's opportunities. Um, you know, Virginia State Police folks use that for gassing facilities and maintenance. Um, so sometimes there's an opportunity to partner with the sheriff's departments of the two counties or a uh, long term we really need to find a location of a Zion Crossroads fire station and we have that specifically designed for industrial fire suppression or office commercial fire suppression which is a totally different uh, in the firefighting world it's totally different than what we're experiencing with aqua here so and that would be the county's water and sewer system long term that would be pro providing that fire station access for fire suppression so that's pretty much it I think um, uh, yeah there's uh, there's this whole thing um, uh, Douglas the planner you know providing all this information um, but the last uh, slide or two is really uh, I think um, if you go on to the next one this is where our final land we're currently at this part in our process um, so um, Josh Gillespie, the Louisa County Plan Community um, Development Director, uh, asked the question, uh, ULI of Virginia. Um, and then Christine Jacobs and myself kind of joined into the discussion. Um, Urban Land Institute um, of Virginia, located in Richmond, they actually um, just finished the Woolen Mills project and, um, over there in Albemarle County. That was the redevelopment project. Um, and they also do work with brand new facilities so, um, and, and, and concepts. And so we, we just asked the question and they immediately responded and said, oh, we're, we're looking for a project. And we're like, oh, okay. Um, and a lot of these folks um, are semi-retired consultants. I will let you know of a smaller Flavana and Louisa kind of localities. We do not have landscape architects, architects, engineers on staff. And guess what? There's an entire team that wants to come and look at what we're doing with the gateway design and creating um, unique sense of place, um, gateway design, treescapes, corridors, landscaping. And oh, by the way, they'll do it for $5,000. If Mr. Dahl and Mr. Chris, Kristen Goodwin and Christine Jacobs all contribute. So I think it would be a, like a project that would be 20,000. That kind of um, consultant work is usually like 250. 250,000 um, in, in the regular planning um, world. So we're still having those discussions. Um, I think uh, Christine Jacobs is gonna try to finalize it with them here at the end of the summer. And what would happen is, um, again, they would need a space um, to do that. We may do that here. Um, we may do that up at uh, Spring Creek. Um, you know, we're kind of looking at uh, what's called a planning charrette um, where they actually do a three-day intensive study of this area. And we put together the team. Um, all of us get assigned to different aspects. We basically drop everything we're doing for three days and focus on um, what we feel is the, the best thing for this locality and for this region. So we're hoping that's going to work out. And the reason that I'd like to let everyone know that we're striving for that is the more that um, we kind of get an interest or buy-in in doing that, um, then they, they become even more interested. So they're currently um, finishing some projects along the I-95 corridor in um, uh, Stafford County and uh, um, that kind of area. So um, this summer, and then they're going to get back with Christine Jacobs uh, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks and let us know where that might go. So that, that would be something we would do this fall. And um, we're really hoping um, that we can bring that to you all um, and let you know when that's going to occur. So um, that's, that's, I believe, everything I have for you all. Um, I will be glad to answer any questions. Um, I really would like everyone to know um, the best way to reach me with, my, uh, with our busy activity uh, schedules is by email, but I am in my office usually at the end of the day, um, quite often from like four to six, so give me a call. Um, that's the best time to reach me, a lot of you that um, know that. Um, we're out in meetings like this, um, Jennifer and I and Eric, um, throughout the day, and um, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Um, let me know if you want to um, come and look at anything. Please always remember that every day of the month we keep a copy of all these maps 
and all of our comprehensive plans. Everything's online. Um, we're going to start this fall to be really ramping up that, um, that uh, comp plan landing page and get away from all the information that's on, on the um, open houses and start having some of these documents um, that will be available once the board retreat is held and they kind of give me and our staff the direction. So, uh, First of all, can we introduce Jennifer? Yes, Jennifer, would you like to come up? Um, You're famous. I'm going to let her introduce herself like I, I kind of did. So um, this, is, this is Jennifer in economic development. I've uh, been here about, uh, what, 10 months now? Yeah. Came over from Albemarle County, was there for about two and a half years, and um, pretty much grew up in Hampton Roads, worked for the city of Suffolk for about 20 years. So um, happy to be here. We've got a lot of exciting projects going on, and I'm uh, happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, and I have a question. Uh, Douglas, can you define functional classifications when it comes to the road? Sure, sure. Yeah, I can do that. I'm get close, too close to that one there, so sorry. In my former uh, days of um, doing some of this in church, I know the microphone and um, But uh, yeah, so functional classifications, um, I'm going to do a lot of this from memory. I did, did have a slide thing, but it's just way too geeky, geeky transportation planning. But um, basically, functional classifications, you, you change a classification from a minor, uh, a major collector to a minor arterial. And what that does, so right now, 250, uh, 15 are um, uh, considered uh, major collector roads. And uh, at the time, Albemarle was changing theirs as they come through, um, basically from what's it, Shadwell area through Keswick, um, and coming into the county. And so they were changing them, not only in their MPO, their metropolitan planning area, they had some changes, but they also wanted to, what's called um, branching out or radiating out towards their gateway areas. And so we said, hey, by the way, we're doing the same thing. Let's, let's um, can we, you know, Chuck Proctor, our planning manager, um, kind of put us together um, with Kevin McDermott and the folks at Albemarle County. And we changed our functional classifications from major collectors to minor arterials. And the key thing about that is um, it doesn't, and we ask these questions, it doesn't change a, a property owner's uh, entrance requirements until VDOT would like for them to change it. So it doesn't go from like getting a $25,000 low volume commercial entrance to a higher one unless the business owner wants it. It's a business owner's option. It doesn't impose other restrictions. We, as our small business owners, we wanted to make sure, and talking with Mr. Dahl, um, we wanted to make sure that we wouldn't impose other things that would be um, changing. So it's very, it's very uh, forward thinking to do this, and we were glad that VDOT Culpepper asked us to do that. So on the board agreed, and we changed all of ours. Um, it further protects our, our major corridors um, and allows for better funding. Thank you. And what's the uh, phase three of the streetscapes down in Palmyra? Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't touch on the phase three as much because phase two is our next one. Phase three would be if you're um, at the rail trail parking lot and the courthouse is here, right. it would be a sidewalk all the way down the right-hand side of, the prop, of that area and that's one residential house and aqua pump station and all that so we don't have a lot of um, you know, um, things that would be in the way of that okay. um, and then our main thing that we've talked with the community about is down on the county property um, on the left that little triangle area it would be a pavilion um, okay. we would like to eventually have a pavilion constructed um, for the farmers market type activities the palmyra activities um, for the uh, into the village and all that. And then other communities and localities, um, uh, when the county owns it, they actually, in the late fall and winter months, when you don't think it's being used, well, actually Public Works puts their snow equipment um, and everything, uh, like dump trucks and skid steers and everything when they clear snow. And oh, by the way, it protects their equipment. And we don't have to buy another building to protect that equipment. So we're trying to look at multi-use of it. Um, we would, of course, do a lot of uh, safety improvements, like maybe a brick wall or some area that would not allow children to run out into 15 and you know that kind of thing. So, um, but that that would allow us also in the farmers market activities to have full visibility on 15, but safety from 15. 
Um, and so those are some, that's, that's the third phase. Okay. The, the, the phase two is the most expensive one, and then that would finish it up. Right, I was just curious, because you, you alluded to it, but didn't describe it, so I was just curious about And again, that, that farmer's market uh, pavilion is something that we have not fully vetted with the board, right, so right, again, right. Keep in mind that I think that a lot of that interest is in that, but that's what one thing we'll talk about at the board retreat, so. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, your last slide that addressed the consultant, mm -hmm. uh, this committee at its last meeting uh, passed a motion encouraging our board of directors, which has not heard it, obviously, since we only just approved the minutes. Uh, to encourage the county to hire consultants to assist you. Okay. So. And so we're, we're, we're kind of right there with you. We're, we are. Um, uh, but yeah, I wanted I, to let you know that. Uh, okay. Because you said you were looking for community support. And yes. And the vote of this committee is part of that. Yes, and, and I think um, we're, we're strong enough to admit that's not a strength of ours, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and, and nor can Mr. Dahl really hire a landscape architect and keep him on staff or her on staff. Um, so we, we see that and we see Kittles and Associates most likely branching off and working heavily with Louisa mm -hmm. and then we can work on our design standards and things like that with Louisa and really finish our plan. So. Yeah, 5,000 is a whole lot less than we were expecting Okay, and those are ballpark numbers yeah, yeah. Uh, that, sure. uh, that Mrs. Jacobs is working on at that level. So we'll, we'll see. Um, uh, we'll see where that comes out. So okay. we're really excited. If not, we're also going to do our own uh, design standards guideline, which we're already been working on some some elements of it. So we'll see where it goes. Good. Thank you. Does anyone in the audience have a question for Mr. Miles? So yes. So the question is. Uh, how does the county work with VDOT or developers to do tree retention in major corridor um, areas? So to answer that question, because I really didn't answer it last night um, for the public comments folks, um, they, they in, um, in those type of uh, R3 residential plan communities, they do more ornamental tree um, landscaping or natural buffering. In this case, they're choosing not to do natural buffering because guess what, most of it's pines lavalli pines and they don't do well um, even if you leave them they get what we all found out on january 4th they get top heavy and break off and then now you have a root system uh, issue and uh, that kind of thing so um, where the preservation of uh, of treescape uh, type things that we do are maintaining uh, hardwoods and other um, ornamental trees or other things that are planted below um, so that you kind of have a, a, a new foundation for landscaping and that kind of thing that, that has a natural appeal. Um, nurseries try to do that and developers try to do that with their landscape architects. So, so basically in Zion Crossroads, the question was, do we, does Aqua have any involvement? I think was a question of supplying water source and sewer treatment. No. What we're doing right now is we're partnering with the Virginia um, Department of Corrections, the women's prison. and. You can jump in on any of this if I, if I stray from Eric's uh, um, expertise. But basically, we have 75,000 gallons of water that's coming into that tank right now from the women's prison that comes down 250. Um, and then the treatment facility that's there for sewer treatment is actually what we're currently using short term. Um, if, you, if you go back and look at the May, the two May meetings, and um, Aqua, uh, Dewberry, our water and wastewater management um, uh, consultant, presented a very strong set of um, uh, in, uh, information in, um, at the May, first May meeting. And then second, the second meeting, Aqua presented their water and sewer requirements. Um, so those systems are totally distinct and totally separate. Um, and then very long term, we would have to build our own sewer treatment facilities up in um, Zion Crossroads and they're very expensive. So we always try to partner and Dewberry Engineering has done a great job with Mr. Dahl and, and the team that uh, Public Works have been doing that on. So I'm gonna kind of leave it at that. Um, but they are totally, totally separate systems. But at long term, we would have um, opportunities to construct our own facilities as growth occurs. The question is park and ride facilities. So yes, you hit on the two main ones. We call it the um, 
Lake Monticello Turkey Sag lot, and then there's the one up at um, Zion Crossroads, uh, there where the hotel uh, is located um, in, in Zion Crossroads um, at the Best Western area. So those lots are functioning, and actually the Zion Crossroads one is probably the most used. However, we have had discussions with John and um, the folks at the TJPDC that we'd like to see a combination. If you notice over across from Jefferson Pharmacy, the Jaunt facility, um, vans park there, and they should really be over in the park and ride lot um, where that function is occurring because it takes up required parking or additional parking. Um, so we've tried to work with Sarah Pennington and um, the folks um, there that uh, do the park and ride facilities in, in conjunction with BDOT. So we're trying, we are working on that and trying to have um, a functionality of, and we're also going to ask them to do additional signage um, uh, out on um, 53. Um, the signs are in kind of poor shape right now. Um, so um, VDOT indicated to us next year in their maintenance opportunities, they are going to be working on that turkey sag quarter, possibly um, resurfacing it. But right now you see what they're doing is the main primary is 53. They're resurfacing that. So there's only a certain amount of money that they can do every year. So we've, we've uh, asked them to consider scoping that area. So yes, we're trying to encourage um, not only for people that might go to medical facilities in, in there, but also for jobs. Um, people that, gas is pretty high still, it's 450. I mean, you know, and people are getting back into the office um, now. So they, they sometimes need to get onto the shuttle for employment as well, so. So the question, yeah, is about pedestrian and um, bike access. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a key component of activities in the VDOT requirements. So basically to let you know, the Route 53 corridor is the same 76 bicycle trail that comes from Kansas City, Missouri to basically Williamsburg um, in, in Richmond. So that is the current um, bicycle lane area. Um, so uh, shoulders and sidewalks and things that are being done on Lake Monticello Road um, that's currently uh, being worked on with the rezoning that we went through last night. Um, so there may be additional um, sidewalk and crossing access um, in the VDOT area of Lake Monticello Road and having people come from Village Oaks and into the main gate or come, you know, Village Oaks um, into the new development that was just proposed last night. But it is on a case-by-case -case basis um, as we work with developers to do sidewalk improvements and um, bicycle lanes, um, not as much in rural areas other than the bicycle lane that we have on 76. So we encourage people to use state parks and um, the, um, the areas that, um, uh, Shire Natural Area and things like that here as it's much safer than traversing on some of the rural roads in the bicycles um, and especially over the road bicycles with, with, ha with, with the hazards and things like that, so. If I could add, not related to the comp plan, but Lake Monticello a few years ago developed three walking trails uh, that are marked. If you're not familiar with those, mm -hmm. you are? Okay. Uh, those are very nice to walk. We like to mm -hmm. kayak across the lake and get out and walk up and enjoy it. Okay. The Planning Commission did hear a rezoning request last night for a commercial property over on Lake Monticello Road, um, just west of yeah. Crofton Plaza. Um, it is proposed to have a 24-hour emergency care, um, a potential grocery store, some commercial retail space uh, with re maybe restaurant space as well, um, and some office buildings. Um, it was deferred for a, for a month um, to get some paperwork in order, um, but it is a positive project that we're, we're hoping to uh, continue to uh, support and um, create and attract businesses to come to Fluviana County. Douglas, Jennifer, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all, and the meeting stands adjourned at, what time is it, 10.50? Thank you.